Okay, today we're looking at Psalm 94, which is the second in the series of psalms, of nine psalms, uh, which we saw have to do with the details connected with the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, and actually the establishment of his kingdom in the world, the time when the Lord will reign. And we saw that the theme was brought out in the first psalm in the series, Psalm 93, verse 1, where it says, The Lord reigneth and is clothed with majesty. And the following psalms will fill out the details of that theme. And so as we look at Psalm 94, we see in the first verse, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, show yourself. Lift up thyself, thou dost uh, judge of the earth, render a, re a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. And this psalm presents to us the spiritual exercise and cry of the remnant. That is the godly uh, Jewish remnant leading up to the coming of Christ in the great uh, tribulation. And um, basically they're calling for vengeance upon their enemies. And we get that word again, uh, how long, that question, which is the technical, technical expression of the cry of, the, of that Jewish remnant. And um, we have here them calling for vengeance, as I say, and that's very uh, similar as to what we get. In fact, it's the same thing, really, as what we get in Revelation chapter 6, under the fifth seal. Verse 9 of Revelation 6 says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw altar, uh, uh, the altar, under the altar, so the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried, cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge the, the blood of them that dwell upon the earth? Well, this is exactly what we have in Psalm um, uh, 94. In our King James Version, our authorized version here at the end of verse 1, it says, uh, Show thyself. Uh, but the better translation would be to shine forth. Shine forth. So it's a calling for the Lord to shine forth in judgment, to come forth, a call for him to come and rescue them. And the psalm, the psalm also views the fact that iniquity is filling the earth and the unrighteous reign. And therefore, this godly remnant is groaning under this and is calling for the Lord to come. But they also see in this psalm that even though that they're groaning under the iniquity of the unrighteous, uh, and that they're being persecuted by the unrighteous. Yet at the same time, they see it's due to their own um, sin, and they're realizing that the Lord's hand of chastisement is upon them uh, because of their sin, that they had rejected Messiah, they had rejected in Christ. And so we get this in verse 12, Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him the rest, rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. And so what the remnant is saying here is that yet they are receiving chastisement from the hand of the Lord for their sin. Yet at the same time, you know, the Lord loves those whom he chastens. And he's teaching them out of the law. As they look into the law, they would see that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. And um, that eventually he would dig a pit for the wicked that the judgment of the wicked was coming. And so verse 14 says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. And, you know, many today uh, teach that, you know, God is finished with the people of Israel, and, and they're, they're done and gone, uh, so-called replacement theology. But as we've seen many times through the Psalms, that this, this is not so. And then we get a remarkable uh, verses, some remarkable verses here. Verse 16 says, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? They're asking, who is going to stand up for us? Who's going to rise up and deliver us? Who will uh, deliver us from the, the workers of iniquity? And that prayer uh, is answered. We see uh, in uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, At that time, that is during the Great Tribulation, Daniel speaking of, at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people, of Daniel's people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people will be delivered, shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So we see that Michael, 
the archangel will stand up for the people of God, that is for the people of Israel. And we see the same thing in Revelation chapter 12, where there's war in heaven uh, between uh, the, the Satan and, and Michael the archangel, and Satan is cast out of heaven. And then we see the woman flee into the wilderness for three and a half years. That's the godly Jewish remnant of Israel. And then as we go on in the psalm, we see more remarkable things. We get in verse 20, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? And the throne of iniquity, iniquity is Antichrist's throne, where Antichrist sits. Now, I have an old my Bible uh, from J.N. Darby. I believe it's from the synopsis. And he says this in verse 20. And this is a most remarkable appeal. Can the throne of iniquity, that is Antichrist's throne, have fellowship with the Lord? If not, then the days of the throne of iniquity were numbered. And as I said a few days ago in one of the other Psalms, once iniquity uh, manifests itself, once it comes to its head, the mystery of iniquity is, is already at work, Paul says. But when the man of sin is revealed, when he sits on the temple of, on the throne of God in the temple of God saying that he is God, then that's really uh, the, the, the numbering of his days. His, his days are coming to an end and Satan will be judged as well and cast out of heaven, as I just mentioned. And, um, you know, uh, this is remarkable. Um, we see here, he says in verse 15, it's a verse I skipped over, but I want to come back to verse 15. But judgment shall return unto righteousness at that time. Judgment will return unto righteousness. And you see, uh, up until this day, judgment and righteousness are separate, have been separated. Now in our Western societies, um, uh, through the influence of Christianity and so on, um, there can be a, a large degree of righteousness in our courts and our legal systems where the, 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 the wicked are punished and, 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 the, and the, um, the innocent are let off and so on. Uh, but that's only um, temporary. And, and largely speaking in, in the world, that's not so. Uh, that uh, righteousness and, and uh, iniquity are, are, have been separated. And so the wicked get off and the righteous are condemned. But even in our societies, there's cases where this happens. But uh, for most of man's history, and in most parts of the world, it's not so. And think of the days of the Lord Jesus. We have the Lord Jesus stand before Pilate. And, and he was the righteous one. He was the just one, the holy one. And he was innocent of all charges. And Pilate had, or he thought he had, the power of judgment in his hand. We know that was given to him from above. The Lord says that. But there we see righteousness and judgment separated. And he condemned the innocent. He three times declared him uh, not guilty and then condemned him to be crucified. But you know, in the coming day in the millennial kingdom of the Lord Jesus, righteousness and judgment will be brought together. And we see that uh, in Psalm 99. I don't want to jump too far ahead. Uh, but in J Psalm 99 verse 4 it says, The king's strength also loves judgment. Thou dost establish equity, thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Righteousness and judgment will be brought together uh, in that day. And then we get another remarkable feature of the last days, the days of apostasy at the end of verse 20. It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? And then there's another little phrase. And now the authorized version says this, which frames mischief by a law. But better translation of that uh, is who frame injustice by a statute, or as the New King James has it, devise evil by the law. What that means is that the time will come is when they will actually legislate iniquity. And that's exactly what we're seeing now in our day. When, for example, uh, the governments are legislating gay marriage, for example, that which is contrary not only to the word of God or the teaching of Christianity, but contrary even to nature, even, the, the, our, our, even to what we're taught in biology. Uh, and so it's a form of apostasy, and they legislate the iniquity. That is, they make it a law, but they can make all the laws they want. But God's law stands firm, and, and judgment will return to righteousness at the coming of the Lord Jesus. And we have this hope as believers. So let's play, pray. Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is uh, in heaven. May the Lord Jesus come quickly. Amen.